is the word of God. And I know that it's true. I'm going to Romans 5.14. Romans 5.14. Romans 5.14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam and o Moses, even over those who had not said according to the likeness of transgressions of Adam, who was a type of him who was to come. Nevertheless, sin reigned from the time of Adam till the time of Moses. Regardless, because Adam had sinned, we, we men would like to lean it on Eve. Amen? Let's, let it, let's blame it on the woman. In fact, that's what Adam did. Hallelujah. Adam did. He, he, he said, it was that woman you gave me made me sin. And say, okay, God, it's your fault. You gave me a woman. But you see, this is the way I believe. And I think it's probably correct. Eve was the first one. To listen to the devil. This is true. The woman listened to the devil. Amen. I don't think it was the first day the devil ever talked to her. I don't think that it was the first time that it was ever. I don't think that Eve was unaccustomed to talking to dragons. I believe the animals talked. So at Adam, he'd been uh, visiting with them. He'd been, he'd been telling them the wrong stuff. He'd been seeding into their mind, trying to get them to where they go against God. He, you got to understand, the devil always works subtly. He's a slow worker. He tries to trick you a little bit of a time. He knows that you're not going to jump into the lake of fire all voluntarily, so he's going to just... That's the way he works. He's subtle. Deceit. He's a deceitful devil. Get, get you just a little bit at a time until he gets you on the edge, and then he pull you over. Amen? And that's what happened. He pulled Eve over, and she ate of the tree that she wasn't supposed to eat of. Did Adam have to eat? Uh-uh. Now, I'm not just sure what God would have done if Adam would have said, No, Eve, I am not going to eat of that fruit of the tree that God told us not to eat of. I, I'm not just sure what would have happened. I think God would have probably just kind of atomized Eve and give him a new woman. Just wiped her out. Be gone. <laughs> I, I kind of think maybe that's how it would have worked. But he didn't. No, he said, Okay, honey, <laughs> let's have us big lunch on this thing here. You think it's good? I'll give it a try. Amen. He was primed by the devil just like she was primed by the devil and she was ready to go that way. So sin reigned and death reigned from Adam to Moses because sin was in every man. I'll give you a clue. If in the garden it had been John and Linda, your pastors. You'd still be in the same shape. Because the frailty of man would fail. We we're destined to fail. We were destined to fail. It wouldn't make no difference who it was. Adam and Eve, John and Linda, Deb and Terry, Doug and Tana. It wouldn't make no difference. If you'd been in the garden, you'd ate. And so every man being the same, everybody ate of that same tree and everybody sinned and all fallen short of the glory of God and everybody broke the law. And everybody has rightfully earned eternal damnation. You earned it. The wages of sin is... Hallelujah. Whew. How did I get that much out of one verse? But the gift is not like the offense. For it is one man's offense, many die, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounds to many. Gift, as I was teaching it in Sunday school this morning. Gift there, the gift of grace. This word for gift is the same word that's used for spiritual gift in the book of Corinthians, grace is a supernatural gift. 
Grace is a supernatural gift. It is something God gave to us that we don't deserve. We don't deserve to be able to operate in the Spirit. We don't deserve tongues and interpretation like we had this morning. That is, we don't deserve that because we are carnal. We are rotten. You know, it always amazes me how people keep coming back. I call you rotten every week and you keep coming back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are, we are steeped in sin. We don't deserve it. It's a supernatural gift that comes from on high that God gives to us because we have received the gift of grace that we might be cleansed by the blood of Jesus that might, we might be able to be used in the kingdom of God. Without that, we ain't nothing. Amen? Amen? It is the spirit that resides within us that does the work. Our own work is just bad. Don't want to call you rotten three times. Just rotten. Hallelujah. And the gift is not like that which came from the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense results in condemnation. But the gift which comes from many offenses results in justification. There was, <laughs> you got to understand here, Adam gave us a gift. He gave us the gift of death. The gift of eternal death. But Jesus came. And he established himself as the one righteous man, God, literal God, wrapped in flesh. He did not sin, and through him we were able to obtain the supernatural gift of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not survive on religion. You will not survive on religion. You will go to hell on religion. There's a lot of religious people in this sort of terribly religious, do their little religious things all the time. Whatever it be, it doesn't make any difference what kind of jump rope you jump, you jump through, what kind of hoop you jump through, like a, like a train circus lion doing what they tell you to do. All those things will not get you to heaven. You've got to have the supernatural gift of grace from on high that Jesus gained for you on the cross. Amen. And there's not near enough of this preached today. There's all kinds of good works preaching and happy preaching, give your money, make you rich preaching, but there ain't enough preaching that you got to get right with God preaching anymore. Amen. Amen. The word of God will cut you. It will hurt you. It'll cut to the bone right through the marrow. If, if I get preached to and I don't come to conviction, if it don't hurt a little bit, there's something definitely wrong because I'm far from perfect. I'm far from perfect. There's something, if they make me feel like I'm the best fellow that ever walked down the street. There's something wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. And gift which come from many offenses result in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned, the one much more who's received abundance of grace and of gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as though one man's offense judgment came to all, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteousness, righteous acts, the free gift came to all who men, resulting in justification of life. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. The righteousness you receive is in Jesus. Amen. Amen. By one man's Perfect life. By one man's perfect life, righteousness reigned. Now, how hard is it to be perfect? It's impossible. It is plumb impossible to be perfect. I mean, you ever try to make a perfect anything? And what happened? a perfect mess. I mean, and yeah, I want to tell you something too. The something you messed up, the, the harder you tried to fix what you messed up, the worse it gets most time. Might as well just leave it the way it is. <laughs> For by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. Moreover, the law and entered that the offense might abound, but the, where sin abound, grace abound much more. Where sin abounds, grace abound much more. We all have abounded in sin. 
We've done a good job of it. Some of us better than others. Amen. Amen. I mean, some of us. Some of us have been um, almost historically good at sinning. Amen. And it don't make any difference how much sin you got. He will forgive it. Amen. He will forgive it. Because it works like this. Repent. But I thought it was a free gift and was all grace and all, all you had to do was just say, Jesus, forgive me. I, I dealt with some people yesterday. I asked them what it meant to repent. And they said, to feel sorry. You say, that's what people think. Most people think to repent is to feel sorry for your sin. And it is. That's the beginning. And you won't get to repentance unless you feel sorry for your sin. But most people are just sorry. They come to the altar. They say, they say God, forgive me. They walk out the door, and they're no different. And they were when they began. Amen? They're just as sorry today. And they go on like that, coming to church every work, being sorry. And they have not repented from their sin. Repent means to change. That means to change your mind. That means to be transformed. That means to take your mind out, throw it away, and put in the mind of Christ. It like screw out the brain light bulb and screw in a different one. That's repentance. Change. Change. 21. So that sin reigned into death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ. So your sins can be forgiven, amen? I already beat, I'm always ahead of the scripture. That's just the way it works in my brain. You can, you, you, your sins can be forgiven. So you can go to the altar of grace, the supernatural gift that God gave to you by going to the cross, and you can have your sins forgiven, amen? And so you can just keep sinning. Why not? I mean... He forgives all your sin, right? And, and it says if, 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 if he is, if you are just and, and you'll come to him and, and confess your sin, that we have an advocate between us and the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he'll forgive your sin. So you might as well just have a good time. Eat, eat drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. Well, there, there's, there's been some people around like that. That's what's called cheap, greasy grace. And it's turning the grace of God into license to sin, and it'll send you to hell. Amen. Here's what Paul said. He just went through all this, and see, if, if you take this thing and you just take a verse here and a verse there, and you notice when I preach, most of the time I just preach right down the line until the Lord sends me somewhere else. If you just take a verse here and a verse there, take three or four verses out of context, half a verse out of context, you can make it say what you want it to say. Because if, if I have a conversation with you and you dissect the conversation, you can make me say almost anything. In fact, if you just took out of there what I said, go ahead and sin, and I, I hadn't explained it, well, everybody would be out just having a good time. Amen? <laughs> but this is what Paul said. Righteous to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Then shall we say, then shall we continue in sin that grace might abound? He was, he was explaining what he wrote here to make sure that nobody got messed up. But people get messed up because they won't read everything he wrote. Amen? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Well, how in the world are you going to get dead to sin? Dead to sin. You gotta be killed. I mean, I, I'm hard on you people. First off, I say you gotta repent. Then I tell you you gotta die. You have to be killed. The old man who was the sin man in Adam must come to death. He's gotta go. He's gotta go. For as certainly not, how shall we who's died? Excuse me, to sin any, any longer in it. Or do you not know that as many as were baptized 
into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. As many as who were baptized in Jesus Christ. Now think of this a little bit. Get it into your brain. It came to me in a vision. When you go into the baptismal tank in the name of the Lord Jesus and are baptized into Christ, you literally are coming symbolically. No, because baptism won't save you. Into Christ. You're being immersed in Jesus Christ. And in that act of obedience, when you're immersed, your old man dies. Or the types you're dying. The old man dies. Because it pictures Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Death, burial, and resurrection. You go, you die, and you come back. You go, you die, you come back in newness of life. Hallelujah. My God. Such a gift of grace. Let me go on. Therefore, when we're buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Newness of life. A true Christian walk is new. It is not a glossing over of the old. See, all too many people say, put on Christianity says that they put on Christ. You don't put on him and cover up the old man. The old man has to die so that the new man might live. You just don't put him on. You put you out. How easy is that? Ooh. It's hard. It's hard. That's why Paul said he had to crucify himself daily. You have to crucify the flesh. When the flesh starts to raise up and, and, and your walk in Christ doesn't look like what it should be, you need to say, flesh, die. You died back there when I went under, and you stay down there. Amen? In Jesus' mighty name. Resist the devil, and he will flee. That's what everybody says, right? It says in James, resist it. But it says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So unless you have submitted yourself to God and you're walking in obedience to God, the devil, you can, you can say, get out of here, devil, all you want. <laughs> It'll be just like the seven sons of Sceva. The, the, the devil said to them, he says, uh, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And they'll come out and beat you up. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing that your own man was crucified with him, that the body of his sin shall be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over us. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he gives, he the lives in God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive in God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. Now, let's hear what it says at the end. Therefore, do not use. So otherwise, you've got to put some effort into it. Amen. You have the indwelling of the Spirit. 
You have the power of the living God. You submit to God and you can cause the devil, resist the devil and he shall flee. But if you leave the devil move on you and just keep thinking about it, he'll move in on you like a flood like he did at Adam. I'm going right back to where I started and then we're going to be done. He and Adam, the devil came around and he talked, I really believe, he come and had little conversations with them. Come down and talk to him just a little bit. A little bit here because he's deceitful. That's the way the devil will work against your faith in Jesus Christ. That's the way he'll work against the commitment that you made. When you start on a walk and, and you start moving toward God and you start doing what you're supposed to do, the devil comes along and he starts to visit with you. He starts to visit with you. And he lays seeds in your mind that will sprout forth and become a plant after a while. I used to have this problem. I don't have so much of this problem anymore that I did at one time. That's because I've disciplined my body. Now, I may look like a big man, but if I wanted to eat the way I wanted to eat, I could be like my uncle. He weighed 600 pounds. It's just the nature of my, some of my family. Some of these things, you got to fight. Otherwise, I just keep getting, I lost about 20-some pounds. I just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I used to have this. It would come on me. I'd be sitting watching the TV in the evening. I'd be sitting there, and I, in the refrigerator, in the freezer, there's a big old, I don't buy them anymore. So it, 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 one thing to do if you resist temptation, just don't. If it ain't in the house, you don't got it. See, there used to be one of them big old big tubs of ice cream in there. And, and, and the devil would work on my brain. He'd speak to me. Now, no, this can be anything now. The devil would work on my brain and he'd say, oh boy, do you want that ice cream? Yes, my flesh wants the ice cream. Yes. Now, did, did I resist the devil? No. I, I let him speak to me. I didn't say, I rebuke you devil of ice cream. Get out of my way. No, I'd listen to the devil. You anticipate because it's working in your mind and you anticipate dipping into the ice cream bucket. Amen? <laughs> and the next thing you know, you're saying to yourself, you're starting, this is how the devil works. This is how it works and you're no longer dead to sin. You start to compromise. <laughs> just a little compromise. Oh, if I just eat one little scoop, that's not going to blow my diet. You know, one little scoop. Ha, you know, that ain't going to. So I sit there and, and you envision and you visualize that one little scoop for a while, you know. And you think about that little scoop and pretty soon you submit to the devil. You stumble out to the kitchen. You go to the freezer and you get out the ice cream bucket. Now, it wouldn't be so bad if you just had that one little scoop. Amen. And you reach up into the cupboard. Now, this is how sin magnifies in your mind. This is how you're drug away from being dead. And you reach up into the cupboard, and there's a big bowls. Of, our little bowls are here, and the big bowls are over here, right beside each other in the cupboard. And when you first open the cupboard, you say, I'm just going to get the little bowl. I'm just going to reach in there and get the little bowl. So I get the little bowl, and I take the little bit out, and I sit down, and I look at the little bowl, and I say, that ain't big enough. <laughs> so you pick the little bowl up, and you put it back in the cupboard. Amen. And you get the big bowl. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yeah. <laughs> you get the big bowl, and you take the big bowl, and you put the little scoop in there that you figured you was going to get in the first place, right? And you look in there and say, that don't amount to nothing, man. I need some ice cream here. And you get the big scooper, and you fill the bowl full, and you go glut all that stuff down, and then you wish you hadn't done it. It all started with letting the devil work on your mind. And I mean, and ice cream's a good illustration, but it could be anything. The longer you think about it, the more it's not going to be dead. So you need to say, I'm submitting to you, God. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. However hard it seems... I'll do it. And then say, devil, get away from me. And he has to flee. He has to flee. Because you have become dead 
to trespasses and sin. Being part of the body of Christ so that sin should not reign in your life, but righteousness through Jesus. Hallelujah. For some of us this morning, it's time to die. It's time to die. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're ready to die and walk with Christ in newness of life, be dead to the old life and new to the new. And you haven't done this before. You haven't put your hands in Jesus. Or if you have in the past and you've backslidden, you need to come back right now. I want to see your hand hit the air just like a rocket. Rockets, rockets, rockets hit in the air. Glory to God. You on TV, you need to change your life. You need to be different. You need to come to Christ. You need to get in church and start serving God day after day, week after week. You need to submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. See, if the devil's bothering you real bad, it's because you're not submitting to God. It says, forsake not and assemble thyselves together. You can't survive on your own. You need to be in a good church under good headship. Amen. Let's everybody come to our feet. Pray. Lord God, repeat after me. Lord God, I dedicate my life to your work. I am submitting my life to you so that the devil has no rights on me. Sin, you're dead. Amen anyone who would like to get saved right now and turn away from your sin, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I confess you right now as Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart, and I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. To contact us, please go to anchoredinfaith.org and click on Contact. Then fill out the form and click on the Submit button. Someone will then contact you within a short time. Social media video platforms carrying our programming can be found by clicking on TV. The latest episode can be viewed directly on our homepage at anchoredinfaith.org. Late breaking information will be posted on facebook.com slash AIFGC. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church.